The day started like any other in our peaceful Texas home. We have recently celebrated our 10th wedding anniversary, an occasion marked by warmth and a reassuring familiarity. Yet little did I know that the tranquility of our decade-long bond was about to be jolted by an unsettling request. My wife, usually so measured and considerate, dropped a bombshell over dinner. The casualness of her tone was starkly at odds with the weight of her words. I've been thinking, how about we try an open relationship? I almost choked on my pasta. The very sentence sounding alien to my ears, an open relationship. The concept was new to me. The threats of monogamy had always been woven deeply into the fabric of our relationship. How could she even suggest such a thing? She attempted to explain, describing it as a means to explore and add some spark to our love life. But all I could hear was an unsettling echo that I might not be enough. I was resolute in my refusal, making it abundantly clear that the concept of sharing her, the woman I've pledged my life to was beyond my acceptance. She appeared surprised at my unwavering response. But the conversation ended there leaving an uneasy silence hanging in the air. That night, I found myself staring at the ceiling grappling with the whirlwind of emotions and thoughts sparked by her unexpected proposal. Sleet seemed like an elusive stranger as I ventured into a realm of uncertainty. Our once unshakable relationship now standing on the precipice of a dramatic change in the days following her shocking proposition, I had hoped things would return to our version of normal. But the comfortable familiarity that once characterized our relationship was replaced by some serious tension, like a heavy blanket that neither of us could shake off. Her proposition seemed to have opened Pandora's box and disagreements became more frequent. I felt as if we were two politicians engaged in a diplomatic standoff each side trying to negotiate a truce, yet neither willing to compromise their stance. She kept advocating for the open relationship bringing up the topic at random each time driving a wedge further into our relationship. My refusal had become a refrain, a familiar line in a recurring script. One that seemed to add a new layer of resentment each time our home, once a place of love and shared laughter turned into a battleground, the walls, echoing with heated exchanges and icy silences. Her once loving gaze was now filled with a cold determination, a hardness I'd never seen before. The playful banter that was once our ritual had been replaced with deliberate avoidance and communication I miss the woman I married. The one who valued our bond and cherished our exclusivity. It was as if she had disappeared, replaced by this stranger with desires that threatened to upend our life together. Each night was a struggle. We drifted apart, not just emotionally but physically as we began sleeping in separate rooms. It was an unspoken agreement. A clear symbol of the distance that had grown between us. The weight of our crumbling relationship became a constant companion. Shadowing my every waking moment I missed the harmony we had and each day I hoped we would find our way back. But as the days turned into weeks, the specter of an open relationship loomed over us, driving us further apart as the rift widened. I could not shake off this uneasy feeling that something wasn't quite right. My wife's behavior once so open and predictable had become secretive and elusive. There was a shift in our pattern, an alteration that seemed more sinister than her mere advocacy for an open relationship. The sound of her laughter filled the house less often replaced by a chilling silence that seemed to envelop our home. The affectionate texts, the loving phone calls all had come to a halt, adding to my growing concerns. She was becoming a stranger in our own home and metamorphosis that left me disoriented, faced with the harsh reality of our deteriorating relationship. I felt the need to safeguard my future. In response, I rearranged my whole financial structure. Whatever accounts we had together, I removed her from them. It felt like a betrayal, a harsh up against the woman I promised to share my life with. But my instincts told me it was necessary. Her late nights at the art studio grew more frequent and her disregard for our shared rituals fueled my suspicions. The person I trusted blindly for a decade was now under my skeptical scrutiny. Her behavior no longer felt like a mere advocacy for an open relationship. But the harbinger of a much larger storm on the horizon as weeks turned into a month, our house became a battlefield of icy stairs and awkward silence. In the midst of this turmoil, 
my intuition kept nudging me whispering that there was more to my wife's strange behavior than met the eye. I was faced with a harsh reality. I needed to get to the bottom of it. Her late-night visits to the art studio had become more frequent and my gut kept signaling that things were awry. That's when I decided to do something. I never thought I'd resort to invade her privacy while she was away. On one of her art nights, I found her sketchbook left carelessly on the coffee table. It felt wrong, almost like betrayal. But my suspicion got the better of me as I flipped through the pages. I expected to see sketches, artwork or even notes about her work. But instead I found nothing, no drawings, no notes, just blank pages. It struck me as on an artist without sketches was like a writer without draft, a clear indication that something about that was fishy. To me, this discovery coupled with her sudden behavioral changes confirmed my worst fears was the art studio just to cover. Had she been like to me all alone? My mind was racing with questions. My heart pounding with the fear of the unknown. As days turned into weeks, her absences became longer and her demeanor colder. We were like two strangers living under the same roof, each going about our own lives disconnected from the other. It was around this time. She stopped informing me about her trips to art exhibitions in other cities. Her unannounced departures and late-night returns started painting a picture. I didn't want to see the woman I had trusted for ten years was now was a stranger to me. The situation was spiraling out of control and it was time for me to take matters into my own hands. Well, the discovery awaiting me would change our lives forever. I was in the middle of a normal workday when my phone rang, her name flashed on the screen. A sight that had once filled me with warmth now filled me with dread. I picked up the call expecting her to tell me about another art show. But instead she hit me with the bombshell. She wanted to separate the world around me froze and the bustling office seemed eerily silent. I felt a sense of detachment as if I was observing the scene from a distance. I had expected this, but hearing it from her made it painfully real. I responded with a hollow agreement stating fine, let's separate. But now without clarifying, I'm not leaving the house. If you want to separate, I would advise you get out. I was stunned when she readily agreed indicating that she had already made arrangements. My mind was whirling. My emotions were a tornado shock, anger, betrayal all swept over me. Yet I managed to hold it together. Not giving her the satisfaction of seeing me break over the next few days, she started moving her things out. I watched as she packed her clothes, her art supplies and her personal belongings. All the while wondering how we had reached this point. It felt surreal watching her leave our home, the place we had built together. Despite the turmoil, there was a sense of relief. This was the opportunity I needed to get to the bottom of her suspicious behavior. This was just the beginning of her revelation that would shock me to my core with her absence from the house. I had the space to think to plan my next move. The first thing I decided was to seek legal advice. Despite living in Texas for a decade, I was ignorant of the divorce laws and needed someone to guide me through the process walking into the lawyer's office. I felt a sense of grim determination. I laid out my story from our initial blissful years to her sudden request for an open relationship, her frequent art nights. And finally the current separation, the lawyer listened occasionally asking questions to gather more information. When I told him about my suspicions of infidelity, he asked if I had any proof. It dawned on me, then I needed more than mere suspicions. I needed hard evidence. If I were to hold her accountable in court, the suggestion from the lawyer put me on a new path. He seemed to think a private investigator would be an asset to my divorce case. It seemed drastic hiring a private investigator. But then so was the situation I found myself in as I walked out of the lawyer's office that day. I was determined to find the truth to unveil whatever secret she had been hiding. What I was about to find out was more shocking than I could ever imagine. There was a certain surrealism to the act of hiring a private investigator like I had stumbled into a more movie, but reality was stranger than fiction. And here I was making that call. The investigator I found had once been the chief of police when he arrived at my house that afternoon. His seriousness was a stark contrast to the sunny Texan day. He listened to my story, took notes and nodded in all the right places. 
We discussed his fees and I gave him all the information I had about my wife's regular haunts, her art night locations, her friends. He was methodical asking for details about her habits, her routines, even her choice of attire. He was interested in the smallest details and assured me he maintained complete confidentiality. I signed the contract and he left over the next few days. I tried to focus on my work while the investigator was presumably tracking my wife's movements. It felt like a parallel universe where I was going through the motions of daily life. While in the shadows, the investigator was piecing together the fragments of my wife's secret life. The call from the investigator came in a few weeks later. His words succinct into the point hit me like a ton of bricks. There's evidence she's been unfaithful with multiple people. This was the moment my worst fears were confirmed. The investigator arrived at my house with the folder, the folder full of indiscreet evidence. The weight of the revelation was physical. My hand felt heavy as I opened the folder to reveal the photos. It was a shocking sight. My wife, the woman I've been married to for ten years caught in moments of intimacy with not just one but eight different men. The investigator talked me through the evidence. He had followed her, monitored her activities and even managed to identify the men she was seeing. It turned out one of them was an old co-worker of hers. Someone she used to work with the small world seemed to be mocking me. The most surprising revelation was her new address. She had moved in with this old co-worker of hers. The investigator said he was part of this open relationship lifestyle that my wife had embraced. It felt like a slap in the face, a mockery of the sanctity of our marriage. I thanked the investigator for his work, his professionalism and paid him his due as he left. He said something that stuck with me. If I were you, I would get out as fast as I can with the evidence in my hands. I felt a mix of emotions, anger, betrayal, shock, and oddly relief. Relief that my suspicions were confirmed that I wasn't crazy. It was a small solace in a sea of heartbreak. The truth was out. Now it was time for the final act equipped with undeniable proof of her infidelity. I approached my attorney. He reviewed the evidence and advised me to file for divorce on the grounds of adultery. The proceedings were set into motion a bunch of legal terms, paperwork and court visits. My wife's attorney tried to argue for alimony but the judge dismissed it, citing the undeniable evidence from the investigator. The house was ordered to be sold. But as expected, there was some equity about $50,000 ordered to be split between us. After that, my wife was left with only her car, her clothes and some furniture. I on the other hand, was able to secure my financial stability, buying myself a new home after the proceedings, months passed. And I heard that the guy my wife was with had kicked her out. She apparently cheated on. The guy she moved in with doesn't make any sense. They were into that open relationship crap. In the end, I was free from a marriage that had become a lie. The woman I had spent ten years with was a stranger. As I moved on with my life, I carried this lesson with me. I had lost a lot. But in the process, I had found the strength within me and a sense of self-worth that I would carry forward. Despite the painful experience, I knew I was going to come out stronger on the other side.